you know, resource uses, you know, allocate for you know, things like unemployment you know, how many people it is we're putting to work, uh, capital utilization, you know, how fast are we running the machines. Those kind of things go up and down uh, in business cycles. On average, you think they're going to come back to some sort of reasonable values. Even those reasonable values themselves will move around. We can talk the natural rates and neighbors and things like that, and then by no means constant. But it's reasonable to think of, of, of your sort of stereotypical business like the shop as something that involves, uh, you know, that wears off over time and sees the economy returning back to trend. In contrast, what economists tend to call technology shops uh, tend to be uh, things that we would think of as permanent. These are things like you know, improvements in you know, our efficiency of producing uh, goods and services. So uh, I just bought myself a, a Blackberry, and now I can check my email 24-7 uh, from home. So I'm not sure if that's a technological improvement or, or, or decline, but either way, it's an example of a technology that I have now. I'm probably not going to throw it away. So, on the, you know, so that, that's, that they're examples of, of, of changes in the economy. They happen uh, all the time, and ultimately are the sort of determinant of the potential outcome of the economy more than, than business cycle fluctuations. Um, and they're sort of permanent shocks. On the other hand, you can easily uh, imagine in the current environment various negative shocks that are, are permanent or sort of quasi-permanent. Uh, in particular, during the current uh, period, we're heading into a period of undoubtedly higher tax rates. Uh, and undoubtedly, we're heading into a period of more stringent financial regulation. A more stringent financial regulation is going to help avoid, hopefully, uh, future financial meltdowns, such as the uh, banking crisis that we're, that we're going through. But they will, on the other hand, uh, most likely restrain both uh, potential uh, sort of have negative supply side effects. And you can see uh, the sort of negative supply side effects of the current crisis having effects of, you know, lasting and having an effect on the world economy, the Irish economy, for many years to come. So for these kind of reasons, it's just very, generally very difficult to know when you see a, when you see a particular movement, when you see the economy growing, very, go, you know, growing particularly fast, particularly slow, to parse through it and say, you know, it's, it's 3%, you know, or half of it is cyclical and half of it is not cyclical, it's generally extremely difficult. This sort of normal amount of uncertainty that prevails for potential outcome is, I think, even greater at, uh, at times like this. So, you know, I, I think the first uh, sort of first point I make about potential outcome is uh, any calculations based on uh, output gaps of where exactly it is the potential output levels now need to be taken with a, a grain of salt at normal times, but need to be taken with probably a whole dollar of it uh, right now. That said, uh, let's go ahead and kind of show what the uh, what, what the technology is, how people how people think about about this. Um, start with the simplest kind of decomposition that people think about. Just think about potential output growth. Um, we can break up output per per head in any economy into two elements. We can break it up into what fraction of the population are at work and what fraction of the population or what's the productivity of those at work. Um, <coughs> Most of the time, if you look at uh, most normal economies, uh, the increases in output that you see that are sort of part of the long-run improvements in potential output stem from productivity growth. Uh, the, the long Irish expansion starting in, in 1986 is historically very unusual in that there was a much more even split between uh, productivity growth and employment growth. So, uh, one quick calculation of 105% increase in GDP between 1986 and 2007. You can break it up about 60% labor productivity. Uh, and actually, maybe I should be 60. Uh, <laughs> that should be whatever the inverse of 44 is. <laughs> 44 is not, it should be 56 or something. Um, either way, it's something like 64. Um, and. Uh, UCD professor in Canada for 100 shot. Uh, sorry, hold on. Never mind. It's supposed to have a 205. I take it back. I'm right. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm, I should see more Coleman's film on Sunday. So, in other words, so productivity growth in the Catholic time period was very good. Um, but it certainly wasn't miraculous. This is a point that's been made in, in discussions of the sort of Celtic time period going back to, in particular, to uh, uh, Patrick and Brendan's uh, uh, 
Irish Hair paper uh, back in 2002. But in particular, productivity growth really slapping off in recent years. If you look at the breakdown in terms of total productivity growth, uh, we can see that the blue line is productivity, the green line is, is, is increases in the, the employment per capita, the employment population ratio. And we can see that both made considerable contributions throughout the expansion period. But the blue line, normal productivity, which we think of in, in most normal economies as the major determinant uh, over time, has really slackened off in recent years. Uh, these are three-year moving averages, so they sort of uh, uh, smoothed out the, uh, the underlying changes a certain amount. Um, and in terms of thinking about, about this, you think about this employment per capita, the green line, this is the contribution to the, the growth rate of the economy. The accumulated is putting it all together. We see what happened in Ireland to the level uh, of employment uh, relative to the, to the population. You see that we started in the mid-80s with an incredibly small proportion of people at work. <coughs> So only 32% of people uh, uh, in, 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 in the Republic of Ireland were at work in the mid 1990s. And we can see that that was way, way below. Uh, here I've done a bunch of comparisons here with the UK and, and, and the US. And what we see is throughout the expansion period, we made all of that up and we, 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 we got to the very top. And, and, and in 2007, the employment to population ratio in Ireland was the same as, uh, as in the US. Now it's useful to sort of you know, break those things down and think about the things that contributed to that. So what I've done here is break it down into three things. You can break down the, the, the fraction of people that work relative to the population into uh, three components. One of which is the fraction of the population at, uh, uh, that are working at age. Well, you can't put you know, children or people over 80 uh, uh, out to work. Um, uh, maybe some people over 80 can write comments in the Irish Times on a Saturday or something. But, um, most, People 15 to 64 are, uh, are, are going to make the last majority of the working population. Um, then they don't have to work if they don't want. Uh, so there's a labor force participation decision. Um, and then we can think about uh, how many of those people, once they're in the labor force, how many of them can, uh, can, can we get into work. And all three of those factors uh, had, had very strong positive effects during the expansion period. Okay, from 86 to 2007. Uh, I've only seen a lot of differences to make that up. Uh, so Basically, basically, a 44% increase in the employment population ratio over this period was split. 13% you know, due to this demographic change, a change in the fraction of people who can be at work. 17% due to the increased labor force participation, and 13% due to lower unemployment rate. And something I want to emphasize is that as of 2007, I think there was very little room for further improvements in any of those factors. So we basically sort of run out of steam uh, there. And in fact, I think there's good reasons to think that even if we hadn't had the global financial meltdown. That, that 2007 likely represented a sort of historical high point for the uh, employment to population ratio. So here's three quick charts. Uh, this is the sort of demographic contribution. We can see that the share of working age population in Ireland was st started out way below the yeah, UK and the US, and our very different demographic profile meant that that rapidly increased, and, and right now it's quite a bit above CSO projections, uh, and I looked at the other day, basically say this is the high point that this is going to start to come down uh, essentially from here. This is labor force participation rates. Again, we started out with very low labor force participation rates. But by the time uh, we got to the end of the boom in 2007, we have labor force participation rates uh, about the same as the UK, slightly below the US. This is nearly all driven by female labor force participation, which is maybe the chart I should have put up. Our level to female labor force participation are, again, not far behind, approximately similar to, to, uh, to these. And these are levels that, if you look at, let's say, the UK and the US, these are levels that they've only managed to sustain. You know, well, these have increased over time. They've only managed to sustain this level of labor force participation at a sort of flat level for about 15 years. So one wouldn't think that we're going to uh, be able to jump beyond that. And then, of course, there's unemployment rates. And one of the things we can see is, again, there's a huge contribution coming from uh, declines in the unemployment rate. And by the time we got to 2007, I, I added the very last monthly observation for the, uh, the other, all the other four rates here at the very end. So the very end of the green line is uh, uh, April 2008. But during this period here where we managed to sustain something in the 4 to 5 percent range, we can see that we were running an unemployment rate that is below where the blue line almost, has almost ever been in the last, in the last 30, 35 years. Uh, so the U, this is a U.S. unemployment rate. But since the market would own, uh, market very, very little labor market regulation, very, very little to uh, of all, all the labor market frictions that, that, that you know, we know process.